Folks, how are we doing today? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We're going to go ahead and review a John Deere 4044M today. So if you're not familiar with my channel, I deal only in used tractors and what I like to think are very nice, clean used tractors from both John Deere and Kubota. And this is a perfect example of what I like to get in stock. Uh, a beautiful piece of inventory with low hours, very clean all around, equipped with some great features with a quick attach bucket, some extra remotes, a cool vertical stack exhaust here too. So we'll go ahead and go through this and give you a little tour of what this machine is all about. If you haven't done so yet, would you please take a moment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, check out my other videos, and let's take a look. So the first thing I'd like to do is give you a little bit of scale. And so I am six foot three standing next to this machine here, and you can see the size of these tires right up next to me, okay? So this is a very big, beefy machine. It is a four series. It's the largest frame size of tractor that John Deere offers in which you can still get a hydrostatic transmission. This is equipped with the hydrostatic transmission as well. You'll also see some tractors in this series, the 4 Series, whether it's 4M or 4R, that will have the power reverser transmission, which is the, it's not a gear shift per se, but it's a lot closer to that than it is to a hydrostatic transmission. Now the 4M series of tractors are not going to have a quick attach loader, okay, or a quick park loader. So this loader is going to be fixed to the tractor. You can unbolt it, but it's not a quick process and it's not intended to be taken on and off on a regular basis. However, the bucket is going to be quick attach. It'll still be your John Deere quick attach, which allows you to take this bucket off and interchange it with pallet forks, a snow pusher, a grapple, any variety of attachments that are out there. I do have a video on how to attach and detach a John Deere style bucket if you are unfamiliar with that. Now these 4M series tractors are really pretty basic and they are meant to be. The, there's the 4R series tractors that have a lot of those extra features and options, you know, that drive the cost up. But a lot of folks don't want that. They just want the three point capability, the loader capability, and you don't want to pay for the extra things that make it cost five, six grand more or whatever it might be. And so here you're going to have very plain Jane utility type of tractor without a lot of frills on it. You know, you have uh, adjustable seat that slides forward and backwards. You have your three point hitch that's still category one, by the way, and 540 RPM rear PTO. You do have a drawbar on the back as well. But you're not going to have features such as tilt steering on here or cruise control or motion match, load match, uh, speed match, that kind of thing either, okay? Even your operator seat is going to be really basic with a basic suspension. There's not going to be an adjustable spring suspension seat on there like you would find on the 4R series. So if we take a closer look at the operator station, you're going to see you're equipped with a parking brake that's down here. You're also going to see this little lever right here you can push up and down is going to be your locking rear differential. And then of course this orange handle here which is the pretty much standard location for all John Deere tractors is going to be your range select so you have a high medium and low range plus neutral. You can see this knob right here this dial this is called a rate of drop or speed of drop control and you can turn it either way and it's going to open or close a relief valve that is essentially going to control the amount of uh, fluid that's coming through it which in turn affects how fast or slow your three-point control drops down. So if you want to maintain really good control over your three-point lowering down, say you have a box scraper that you want to just trim down real slow, you can almost entirely close that valve there and make that happen. However, if you want to have something that drops down really quick, or a lot quicker for instance, you can open that valve up, which will allow the three-point to drop down very fast. So you will have a split brake that's down here on the left hand side, okay? You can uh, combine them like they are now, or you can separate them apart like this and operate them independently. Okay, so here's some controls right here that are up on the console. You have your left and right turn signals. This middle button here allows you to scroll through the dash, the gauge cluster here, and you can get PTO hours, regen, uh, hours since last regen, slip percentage, all that kind of thing that'll display right on here. In the middle down here are your flashers. These couple of settings here, that'll turn your regen system off. This will engage your regen system if you want to complete it in the park uh, mode. Okay, and then you've got uh, some headlight settings here off and a couple of different variants for on. So here's a pretty cool look at that vertical stack. This is an option that is available. If you want to take it off, you can simply pull it up and then you'll take it off right there. And the reason you'd want to do that is because you need to take it off in order to access the engine compartment. Okay, so if you take a look at this black handle right here, this is going to be your three point raise and lower, your rock shaft control. Okay, so you just slide that forward here if you want to lower your three point hitch and you pull it back if you want to raise it. Okay, 
So coupled with that three-point hitch, you're going to have a little stop here that's adjustable. And so if you want to have a certain setting, say where your brush hog goes down to, and you have to raise it up, uh, but you want to come back down to that same setting. You know, if this is your setting here, the, the, the great spot for where the height that you want to cut with your um, brush hog, put it right here. And then if you have to raise up because you're making a turn or, you know, there's a stump you got to get over, you can bring it right back down to that same spot there without having to worry about anything else. So this right here, of course, is your engine throttle control, okay? So RPMs are going to be max if you put it all the way up and at idle down low. The loader joystick is here as well. You'll see it is mounted to the loader frame itself, okay? And so this means that you're not going to have a loader joystick on this machine without the loader. So it is equipped with the float function as well. So this would be down if you normally wanted to lower your entire loader assembly. And then if you push a little bit further, it'll enter the float position there, which relieves that hydraulic down pressure, okay? To get back out of float. There you go. Over here on the right-hand fender, you're going to see this yellow knob that you can pull up or down, okay? And this is going to engage your rear PTO. On the 4 Series of tractors, there is no mid-PTO option. It doesn't matter if it's the M or the R. You can only uh, get these equipped with a rear PTO, and so this will turn your brush hog on and off. You know, make the tine spin and the blade spin, that kind of thing, okay? And turn it back off just by doing that. You will see a bunch of extra knockouts here. You can have these if you want to add additional lights or... Maybe if you put a sprayer on the back, you want to have an on-off switch, that kind of thing. Lots of knockouts there, probably more than are uh, ever going to be used. This right here, will you can see the little book, like a little manual. You know, if that light is on, you know, it means there's a service issue that you want to take, take a look at, okay? So this button right here is going to be tied into the fifth function, okay? And so you have a fourth and a fifth function here, and you can see that right there, Okay. So the fourth function is going to have what's called float as well. And so you can push it down like you normally would. It'll go up or down. Okay, that's the center position, neutral almost. And then if you want to go into float, push it down further, and it will be in the float function there. That is for the fourth function, okay? And just get it back there. Now I'm going to turn this on, and uh, you're going to see that I'm going to push this button down this way, and this little green light is going to light up here, okay? And what that's going to allow you to do is put the fifth function this control right here into the continuous flow mode, all right? And now I'm told by John Deere that continuous flow with this fifth function here isn't adequate for running a backhoe, but perhaps it is gonna be adequate for others uh, less uh, consuming types of attachments that require continuous flow. So the procedure will be I'll turn the machine on and then I'm going to push this up. You'll see the little green light here, turn on green, okay? And then after that, I will raise this all the way up and it's going to stay up in this position here and then when i let go or when i turn off this button down this way this lever is just going to pop right back down here okay Okay, so it has entered into the continuous flow mode, all right? And now I'm going to push this button off and watch that lever. Turn it on again. And it's entered into continuous flow mode. And we'll go ahead and turn it off. There you go. So one of the big mistakes, I guess, that I think John Deere made, and they have since corrected uh, with the 4M model, is with this fixed ROPS, okay, this fixed rollover protection system. And that in and of itself is not a mistake, but it's the fact that I can't fit this inside these eight foot doors here, okay? And so it is about, I don't know, inch, maybe inch and a half, somewhere in that ballpark, just kind of eyeballing it when I'm looking, uh, too tall to fit in an eight foot door. So you need to have an eight and a half foot door, you know, otherwise you got to have it outside. And I don't like to store my tractors outside, but that's where this one is staying. You might even see some dew that's still on here just because I tried to clean some of it off, but it's sitting outside. I can't fit it in here. And so uh, be aware of that. If you plan on putting it outside or if you have an overhead storage um, or like a canopy type of thing, you know, make sure you have that right clearance that you need there. Uh, if you're going to be putting it inside, eight foot is not going to cut it. You need to have at least eight and a half.
So here's a little bit closer up view of the three point hitch, the whole back end of this tractor. You can see how wide it sits. It's, uh, it's about a six foot wide tractor. Now the ag tires like this, the R1 ags do sit a little bit narrower than what the R4s would sit. Um, however, you're also gonna sit a little bit higher as well. I don't have um, another 4M series with R4 tires on it to compare against right now, but that's just the general gist of it. I can't give you an exact dimension at the moment. But you are gonna see again, this is category one. Uh, Three-point hitch here in 540 RPM rear PTO. That's going to be standard. You're going to have your drawbar that's also adjustable. Uh, these are sway links that are adjustable as well. You have a little um, tightening nut here that you can loosen up and then adjust these arms in and out. And of course, you can put a Category 1 John Deere iMatch or another version of that quick hitch available uh, on this three-point hitch here. You'll also see, you can see these little silver pieces here. These actually allow you to have two different positions um, for the minimum and maximum height of your three-point hitch. And so you can pull the little pins out and you can rotate this little piece of steel and put it the other direction. And you're gonna be able to adjust that maximum height or um, the maximum or the minimum height, I guess, uh, with that adjustment there. And here's another look, you can see these green lines here that are feeding right back into the top of the transaxle system and going right up to the fourth and the fifth outlet. And I wanna make sure you guys understand that fourth and a fifth outlet like this or a third function or power beyond, any of those types of additional options are not standard, okay? They are very much only an option and they will drive the cost up significantly of a tractor. So not everybody needs a fourth and a fifth or a third or power beyond. They all have very specific applications. However, if you need it, it's a great value to buy it on a tractor that already has it because that initial cost there is going to be depreciated down and you're going to get a better savings that way by buying one that already has those additional features on it. I do want to clarify that by saying though that probably only 10, 15, maybe 20% at most of the tractors that I get in are equipped with these additional features. So what can you do with this fourth and fifth outlet? Great question. So a good example if you need both remotes of these additional remotes would be with a three-point snowblower. Let's say that three-point snowblower has an auger, a hydraulic auger, so you can shoot the snow this way or that way or whatever way you want, and then also a hydraulic deflector, okay? And so if you want to shoot it way up high or if you want to shoot it way down low, they're both hydraulic options. That means you need two additional hydraulic circuits there to be able to control those without sacrificing anything else. And so you, these two outlets right here are going to make one circuit, okay? So you plug something into these two outlets here, and then you can move that lever that's on the front side that we took a look at and you'll be able to angle back and forth this way. If you want to deflect like this, take the two hoses that are for the, de the deflector, that hydraulic kit, plug them into the black one, okay? And then again, you can use that lever up and down and it's gonna make that deflector angle adjust, okay? Another popular example is you use one of these, you get some long uh, flexible rubber hoses made up you run them all the way through, you just kind of feed them through zip time if you need to, up to the front, you can plug them in and run a grapple that way. So if you want to be able to open and close that grapple, still maintain control of your other loader functions that you have there on the front, just get those hoses made up, plug them in here, and away you go. Well, I want to say thank you for watching. If you wouldn't mind, take a moment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, make sure you check out my other videos, and also you can check out our inventory. It's constantly rotating at goodworkstractors.com. You'll see tractors like this. It is for sale, at least at the time of this video. And uh, if not, maybe we can get you one similar to it, or maybe we have one that's similar to it in inventory. So thanks again. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.